Hey, what's up? This is Loud Boy, and we are going to be playing Ocarina of Time. Clearly, it is my favorite Zelda game. It is the one game that got me into Zelda way back in, what, 1996, 97? Uh, so, for almost 30 years, this game has remained my favorite, even though I've played all, mostly all of them, at least for the 3D ones. I've always been a big fan of the 3D Zelda games, not a really big fan of the 8-bit versions. You know, the ones that, you know, look down on the map and has that kind of that overview or the three-quarter view. Anyway, but when Zelda went full 3D, Ocarina of Time, it changed everything. And since then, I've played, of course, Wind Waker. Wasn't a huge fan of Majora's Mask. My son, Ethan, is. Uh, but I play, I play Majora. And then uh, Wind Waker in Twilight and Skyward and Breath of the Wild. And, of course, now Tears of the Kingdom. Love that game. Um, so I've played them all through the years, but Ocarina still remains my favorite. I still get out this, my original Nintendo 64. I bought this, and of course the game when it came out. I have a whole slew of games, of course, and uh, when Mario 64 came out, that was huge. Um, and it blew my mind that Mario was in, in full 3D environment. But when this came out, this changed everything. I won't be playing my original 64 today, uh, although I could still in great working order and I have the capture card for this I decided actually to use my switch and I have a uh, an official straight from Nintendo uh, 64 wireless controller which of course is the only way to play having your the uh, the C buttons be separate buttons here is I've tried it inside the emulator and when you're having to use an analog stick uh, to control the, the C functions, it's a pain in the butt. But to have these actually here, you know, so where your slingshot and your stick, your deco, deco seeds, and, and so on. Deco seeds, I never know how to pronounce that. But the point is, got the sweet controller, got my Nintendo Switch fired up, and that's what I'm going to be running today. And I already have uh, two save files here. I was playing uh, Arrow is a character. He's the title character, uh, the main protagonist of the novel that I'm writing. Um, Artera, Arrow and the Keys to, to Ascension. But uh, but I created a new save file uh, with, of course, Link. I thought we'd keep it straightforward today. So now let's start off. In the vast, deep forest of Hyrule. Long as I have I served as the guardian spirit, I am known as the Deku Tree. And by the way, I've heard Deku Tree and Deku Tree, so I prefer Deku, and that's what I'm going to use. All right, the children of the forest. Each Kokori has his or her own guardian fairy. However, there is one boy who does not have a fairy. And please... Forgive any uh, pronunciations I might get wrong. This is almost 30 years, and if I've gotten stuff wrong for 30 years, I doubt I'm going to correct it now. So bear with me if I pronounce something incorrectly. For instance, uh, the female best friend from the forest. Is it Saria or is it Sarah? I have no clue. But anyway... So that little, that cutscene there, interesting. It's, it's almost as if he's having a premonition, a dream. Navi, Navi, where art thou? Come hither. Hmm. So Navi is a fairy. Oh, Navi the fairy. And the Deku, the De Deku tree is talking to him. Listen to my words, the words of the Deku tree. Dost thou sense it? the climate of evil descending upon this realm. Malevolent forces, even now, are mustering to attack our land of Hyrule. 
for so long. The K Kokiri Forest. I told you I'm horrible with the pronunciation. The source of life has stood as a barrier, deterring outsiders and maintaining order of the world. But before this tremendous evil power, even my power is as nothing. It seems the time has come for the boy without a fairy to begin his journey. The youth whose destiny it is to lead Hyrule to the path of justice and truth. Navi, go now. Find our young friend and guide him to me. I do not have much time left. Fly, Navi, fly. Run, Barry, run. <laughs> the fate of the forest, nay, the world, depends upon thee. And off Navi goes. Come on! Can Hyrule's destiny really depend on such a lazy boy? I think we've all been there. Of course, we didn't have a, uh, a fairy badgering us awake. But I think we all know what it's like to uh, be super groggy when we wake up. At least I, I, I know all about that. You finally woke up. I'm Navi the Fairy. The great Deku Tree has asked me to be your partner from now on. Nice to meet you. The great Deku Tree has summoned you. So let's get going right now. All right, so this begins inside our little house. And we get introduced to the forest, the little village inside the forest. And here she comes. The girl whose name I probably uh, mispronounce every time. Yahoo! Hi, Link! By the way, check this out. I guess Link drew a, uh, a hero with a sword fighting a big dragon monster, which is something that we'll do actually in this game. Wow, a fairy! Finally, a fairy came to you, Link. Wow, that's great news. I am so happy for you. Now, you are true for curry, Link. The great Deku Tree has summoned you. I had to let my dog in. In my, uh, in my little uh, office room here, so... All right, I'm back. It's quite an honor to talk to the great Deku Tree. I'll wait for you here. Get going. Go see the great Deku Tree. All right, so here's the gist. You have two things to do. You need a sword and a shield. And this is something that actually um, you find out real easily here. If you... Oh, good job. All right. But if you, if you head over here to the path that leads to the Deku Tree, I know I'm going to get comments about my pronunciation. Pronunciation, That's fine. Go ahead and comment away. Uh, hey, you, Mr. No Fairy. What's your business with the Great Deku Tree? Without a fairy, you're not even a real man. What? You've got a fairy? Say what? The Great Deku Tree actually summoned you? What? Why would he have summoned you and not the great Mido? This isn't funny. I don't believe it. You aren't even fully equipped yet. How do you think you're going to help the great Deku Tree without a sword and a shield ready? 
So that that's our main quest, is to get our sword and shield. And that way we can actually go see the tree. What? You're right. I don't have my equipment ready, but if you want to pass through here, you should at least equip a sword and a shield. Alright, so that, that's the thing. So there's two things. To get the sword, we have to go actually just get it. And I'll show you where. And But to get the shield, we need 40 rupees. How can you get rupees? Well, you can run through the grass. That's one way. They're also scattered throughout the village, so say, believe it or not, if you jump on here, a lot of times, this will actually give you... Oh, it didn't that time. Um, it'll, it'll give you a fiver. So let, let's go in here. I'll head up to the sword in just a second here. Alright, if you open up these in this house right near the entrance of the village. All right, there's five. There's 10. Well, I mean, okay, thank you for the heart, which I didn't need yet. And then finally, all right, so in this, this little house alone, we have got 11, which makes our total probably about 13. Okay, it's not showing me right now. Oh, uh, there it is. It's at the bottom of the screen. Goodness sakes, Eric. Yeah, we have 14 right now. So, the sword, if you come back through here, you have to go through this little hole. I'm going to line myself up here. There we go. There's also some rupees in here as well. So, um, in the little alcoves to the right. So right here, there's, there's five more. Watch out for the boulder. Okay, there's two more there. Five more there. We're up to 26. So, inside this chest, at the back of this little maze that has the boulder going round and round, there is our sword. All right, so we have the Kokori sword, and it says on the equipment screen, you can select it. This is the hidden treasure of the Kokori, but you can borrow it for a while. Be sure to practice with it before you really fight. All right, so to equip it, we press the start button, and just head over, and then press A, and now we have a sword. You press that B button, you use your sword. Sometimes you can get a rupee by cutting the grass, not this time. That's fine. All right, so with 26, we now need, uh, let's see, let's do some quick math here. 14 more to get up to 40. Look at me with the sweet math skills. Never my strong suit, uh, but today at least I could do that much. So you're, you're welcome, people. Um, all right, so we got up to 28. Now, there is a, an easy one to get, by the way. By the way, I always just, um... I always just play this by ear. I do, I'm never in, in all these years, in probably almost 30 years, I have not memorized where all the rupees are. I just, isn't that weird? Um, I'm not, there we go. All right, so 34. Here's the thing. If I just get one more, I'm going to be good to go, and I'll tell you why. There is a hidden five rupee blue one in the actual store itself. And, uh, man, I keep falling off of that. You'd think I never played this before. Trust me, I have. I just believe me. Oh, hey, by the way, there is one a thing, a blue one. See, the green are equal one. The five are the blue ones. So now we have 39. Technically, we just need one more. But like I said, in the store, there is a hidden one. Oh yeah, the game wants to teach us about Z-targeting. So that girl that's up there on top of the store awning, the Z, you just press the Z button, press A. So yes, that's how you use a fairy. It's so great that you finally have a fairy partner. I'll teach you how to talk to people using your fairy. 
When a fairy flies near a person or a thing, press Z to look in that direction. If you use Z targeting, you can talk to people from a distance, like we're doing now. When you have nothing that you can target, you can press Z or just to look forward and try it. Alright, so inside the store, if you go around this corner right here, there is a blue rupee back there, which gives us a grand total of 44. Now, this is shop owner. Press right, buy. By the way, the shield costs 40, if I didn't make that clear before. Now we have the shield, and we can equip that, and we will have both sword and shield. Uh, there we go. We'll have both sword and shield equipped, which is what the quote unquote so called Great Mido wants. So let's press start. Just like we did before, swipe over in your menu. Press shield and done. Save, yes. And let's talk to him. By the way, I went 20 something years thinking that this was a girl. I, nothing about the look of that little fairy dude makes me think it's a dude. But I digress. Before this becomes problematic, why should it be problematic? I, I always thought it was a girl, but the point is, I guess Mido's a guy. And he's basically saying, what, you have the sword? Good grief. Well, even with all that stuff, a wimp is still a wimp. He's such a lovely guy. I, the Great Mido, will never accept you as one of us. Shoot. How did you get to become the favorite of Sarah, or Saria, and the Great Deku Tree? Huh? Grumble, grumble, yada, yada. Alright, so here's the deal. That was actually very intuitive. There is a spoiler that I could share with you right now. Link is not exactly someone from this village. So Mido's actually kind of giving a hint to something we find out later on. Alright, so basically, um, these plants that try to eat you, you swipe them down and you get Deku Sticks. Uh, Deku Sticks are great for using them to carry fire and flames. They also can be used as weapons. And here we go. Great Deku Tree, I'm back. That's Navi talking. Oh, Navi, thou hast returned. Link, welcome. Listen carefully to what I, the Deku Tree, am about to tell thee. Thy slumber these past moons must have been restless and full of nightmares. As the servants of evil gain strength, a vile climate pervades the land and causes nightmares to those sensitive to it. Verily, thou hast felt it. Link, the time has come to test thy courage. I have been cursed. I need you to break the curse with your wisdom and courage. Dost thou have courage enough to undertake this task? Sure do. Then enter, brave Link, and thou too, Navi. Navi the fairy, thou must aid Link. And Link, when Navi speaks, use the up sea arrow thing <laughs> and listen well to her words of wisdom. Alright, so the Deku tree has been cursed. And this is actually our first dungeon. Inside the Deku tree. So, right off the bat, you can see we have two more of these dudes. This is the first time we get Deku Nut. So basically, let's go in here. I like to do the... How do I do it? I think I do the stick here, the nut here, and on my left one, I normally do the, um, the uh, slingshot. Spoiler alert, yes, the slingshot's coming up. Okay. So, I normally just ignore those guys, go straight up the ladder. I mean, when you've been doing something for 20 plus years, you kind of get set in your ways. Hey, welcome to human nature. Alright, check it out. Oh yeah, well, she's gonna tell us. 
Look at the wall. The vine's growing. Give it a rough surface. Maybe you can climb it, Link. But also, this is what I wanted you to see. These guys. Can't kill them yet. But it will be essential to kill them in a moment. But we need one piece of equipment that we do not yet have. Let's see it's look inside the chest. It feels like my daily amiibo videos. Except I don't get sweet maps all the time. Alright, so this is our dungeon map. Every dungeon has a map. And in that dungeon map, if you go to the subscreen, you can actually look at all the different uh, floors from the two basements. This one has three floors above the two basements. And the, the one that with the little link head to the left of 1F and that, that glowing uh, flashing thing. Anyway, that just indicates where we are currently are. Um, the other sections, see how they're just outlines? We have not yet ventured into those sections, so therefore they are remaining to be explored and played through. All right, so moving on. Now, one thing that my, my uh, one of my sons cannot get used to it with this game is that there is no jump button. Uh, so if, you, if you've never played Ocarina of Time, you basically just have to trust that when you run towards the edge of, well, like you just saw me do there, um, it automatically jumps for you. Uh, this was a game design choice that they made for this game. Um, I know, that did change with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. There's now a jump button. However, um, the choice was made back then to not, yeah, maybe to differentiate from Mario, because there's a lot of jumping in Mario, uh, to differentiate it from typical platforming things. So therefore, it's just an automatic thing. I think that was their conscientious, their their decision that they made when they designed and, and built this game. All right, I digress. Navi is saying, you can open the door by standing in front of it by pressing A. Well, thank you, Navi. Pay attention to what the action icon says. And that's the blue icon at the top of the screen. So what she's referring is, if you look at the top of the screen, it says return. And you see that flashing uh, blue square at the bottom. So watch this, when I walk up to the door, you can see that that my blue button, my my uh, A button, right there I said attack, but now if I walk up to the door it says open. So the buttons actually change their functionality depending on where you are. So now this is where I'll use my shield. And I'm just gonna go up and talk to this dude. Oh, forgive me master. If I give you a clue, will you let me go? When you jump off a high cliff, and hold your control stick forward, you will roll on the ground when you land and you won't get hurt from the fall. I can't guarantee it'll work though if the cliff is really, really high. Hee <laughs> hee. Well, <clears throat> try it if you're feeling bold. Blah, 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 blah. All right. And that is true. Uh, when you jump off a surface in this game uh, onto a, a lower platform or, or floor, uh, you will actually do a roll uh, and that'll save you from some damage if it's you know, it has to be the right thing. If it's too high, it's not true. But anyway, that's true in general. This block falls away, but if you keep going, again, auto jump. Here's another chest in our dungeon. This has something extremely useful, though. This is our fairy slingshot. And it's telling us once again that we can map this to one of the uh, four C buttons. Well, specifically three that you can map to. The top C button's always reserved for Navi. Um, and looking around, so first person view. So anyway, uh, it's telling you that you can use So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to press start. Go over here. Map that to that C button. And you can see up here, if you're not seeing what I'm saying. Anyway, um, it, well, basically I could choose, if I wanted, and then I could press the, the down C button and vice versa so uh in general though i think I, I like to have this here and the deku seed here boom done all right so now i take out my slingshot i could take out the slingshot and press the z button and what that does is navi will fly over to an object and uh and give you that z targeting for it so here you see the roll? That was a roll that I just did. This is a 
first time we get Deku seeds. And these are the seeds that basically are our slingshot ammo. Um, and you'll find them in this fast growing, fast growing grass throughout dungeons and such. And Hyrule Field and, and, and wherever you are. So, a couple more rupees. Let's get out of here. Now, remember I said we needed some equipment to get rid of those spiders on the wall? We have it now. We have the slingshot. So basically, one, just aiming, two, So yes, the, the surface to which she was referring is the stuff that sort of looks like vines. Yes, graphics have gotten a lot better since ha since this these days, but uh, yes, this is what vines looked like back in this day. And by the way. The, these guys are hanging here. We'll need to take one of these guys out in a moment. I'll come back and get him in a moment. Alright. In this room, remember, I did mention using the, uh, the Deku stick. If you light it on this torch right here, and walk over to this torch... That unlocks the door. What you want to do is press the uh, sword button and it gets rid of the stick. That way, if you let it burn too long, like any piece of wood or paper, it burns away and disappears. So basically, with those ramps up, I press that button on the floor. I can run across the room. Now this is a compass. Dungeons have both maps and compasses. Super handy. If you look at the uh, the square map on the screen, I'm now sort of facing it. Um, you can see the, see the yellow arrows turning, that's me. The red arrow indicates where I started in this particular room. And then it actually tells you where a, uh, inside this room you can find a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you can find the chests. So. Can't believe I forgot the word chest. <laughs> so, guys, look at him. Very good. I'm gonna do one more thing. There's both a chest and another item that we want over here to the left. So, inside the chest, I think it's just a heart. Yeah. All right. So that's a heart. Not exactly something we need needed yet. However. That right there. Every time I walk around right in. Now, yeah, now I need the heart. You destroyed a gold skulltula. And you get a token, proving you destroyed. So basically, this is a cool little bonus system. There are a lot of these throughout your adventure. And so say after 10, 20, 30, you know, 90, 100, 20, you get different items and bonus items that, uh, they, that are actually super helpful in, in a lot of ways. So, like, uh, bigger wallets to carry more money. Um, there's also a, a cool thing that vibrates your controller. Um, so basically, this is what we need to do. The big long jump off down into the water. So that's that's our big dive, leap of faith. And hear, you guys hear that sound? That is another gold skull taller. So when I climb up here, I got another one. All right, cool. That makes two. This can be a little bit tricky. Step one, step on the switch. When you're 
trying this the first time, this part can be tricky. You light your stick. There's actually floor down here, so you don't jump into water. And, uh, and, and extinguish, and there goes my stick. Extinguish your stick. But if you jump on that one little floor that can be seen, shields up, Z target, and guess what? With Z targeting, you can, yeah, he shoots a seed at you, you can shoot it right back at him. So basically, he's gonna give you a massive hint. A uh, hint for his uh, three brothers coming up. And the order is 231 or 23 1. Of course, 23 is, um, was Michael Jordan's number. For some reason, I always remember that. All right, so we got that. Let's see if there's some fast growing grass here. There's not a lot more that we need in this room, really. And I'm good on seeds. Now, this is one of your first tests with your slingshot. The eye over that door. You shoot that sucker. The door unlocks. This can be a little bit tricky the first time too. Uh, they're, here they're teaching you about diving. So uh, when you're jumping and swimming in, in the water, you can press A, you can actually dive below the surface. hit that switch under the water, it lowers the water level, which if you time this right, now that the water is lower, so is the platform that is moving over the water, and guess what? You go right under that spike log thing. Alright, so we're going to get rid of this guy, so you target him, have your sword out, and by the way, your B button is a normal slash. Okay, this is where she's saying stand next to this block, grab it with A, and while holding it with A, you can push or pull it. You can stand next to the block, press A while pressing. All right, it seems we've done it. You'll see what I, in a second. Pay attention to the action icon, thank you. All right, so what, as I was saying, if you press the B button, it's a slash. However, if you Z target, and press A, you can get this cool downward slash, and, which is actually a, a more powerful strike for some enemies, so that can be a nice thing to know and have. Now that we killed that lovely spider dude, we can climb up in this brick. This block. Is this the room with the, um... No. I thought that was a waste of time. Alright, here we go. So now, speaking of, we use our, our Deku stick and we need to light these torches. Which unlocks that door. Wait a second. All right. Doors unlocked. Now remember the map. In case you get turned around, the red indicates the door I came in, so I simply go to the other door, which is a door I've not yet gone through. Now, there's actually some lovely little guys up here on the ceiling. Most of the time, I'm too far away. Most of the time you can actually, am I still too far away? Uh, you can wipe them out with your slingshot. Good, good shot, Eric. Uh, okay, that's not working out. If you don't, you have to go ahead and fight them traditionally way. Alright, there's one more. Yep. Yeah. 
I got it. Alright. You're going to see more of those later. But for now, um, they're basically like little two-legged spider dudes that hang from pods and then they come out. So this is another instance where we use our Deku stick. I believe this is the room. Yeah. Yep. This is also the room that if you came back here later when you get have bombs, you can use the bombs on that wall right there. But for now, of course, we do not yet have a bomb bag and bomb flowers, so we, we move on. So this is another puzzle. The gist is this. You push the brick into the water. Or the block into the water. There's another gold skull color. This can be a little bit tricky to get after you kill him. I find if you Z target it and, and jump off, Nine times out of ten, you can grab it. And I believe that gives us, gives us a total of three. You can check how many you have right here. Yep. You can see that right there we have three. Gold, gold, gold tallas. Man, I, that's a, I always have trouble saying that one. Um, and also, check it out. To our maps. Right now we're in basement one. And if you look throughout the map, see how all of those are highlight are filled in with blue. We've been to all those places, and that sh the blinking area shows you where we currently are. The final place we need to go is in basement two. The skull icon to the right of B two, and then up there, also in the map above the outline, indicates that that's the big boss of this dungeon. So, so lighting our Deku stick, we jump across onto the block and do a roll. I always like to use my sword down there um, as I fall. Alright, earlier that guy gave us a hint, remember? Two, three, one. Well, here we go. There's three guys here. Two would be the one in the middle. Z target him. And he freezes. Three. Man, let's go to one. You have to get in this order, otherwise they'll just reset. How did you know our secret? How irritating. So annoying. I'm going to reveal the secret of Queen Gamma. To administer the coup de grace. Strike with a sword while she's stunned. Oh, Queenie. Sorry about that. Yeah, some royal subject he was. I meant loyal. Loyal subject. Alright, here we go. This is the big boss of the Deku Tree of our first dungeon. And as an arachnophobic, someone who's lifelong hated spiders, don't care for this one very much, but... Oh well. I've seen worse. Like in Twilight Princess, for example. And so basically, if we use our, our, our first person view here... When you meet eye to eye... Parasitic, armored, arachnid. Alright, well, how do I do this here? Okay. Can't believe I kept missing. That's a couple times I've played this. I, I, I've done that. I, I keep missing the eyeball. It's the easiest thing in the world. And super embarrassing here. But anyway, so. Here's the gist. When the eye turns red. Am I looking at the wrong, I'm looking at the wrong side of the eye. Aren't I? This 
actually really embarrassing. I've beaten this thing with like five sword slashes before. I can't believe I'm messing up this badly. But you know, yeah, of course, you know. on the ceiling with your slingshot and then I kept messing that up it's just the most embarrassing thing ever I've done this a hundred times all right so that's what I should have done uh, at least for taking way too long to get that done so the gist is this the eye, the eye will be exposed and turn red, and you can shoot it with a slingshot when it's on a ceiling. Except for you make a huge colossal mistake like I did, and you're behind it, and you can't see the eye. When it's on the ground, you can use a Deku Nut, stun it, slash at the eye. When it drops those eggs with the baby spiders inside, well, what do you do? Kill the eggs before the spiders hatch. So that's the gist. R rinse, repeat. Do it all over again till the spider dies. Warp power container. This will now increase from three to four total health. And then get in the warp field. And you will then ascend out of this dungeon, having completed it and beaten it. And for this major victory, this is actually pretty sad. Man, spoilers much. Well done, Link. Thou hast fairly demonstrated thy courage. I knew that thou wouldst be able to carry out my wishes. Now, I have yet more to tell ye. Wouldst thou listen? Yes. Now listen carefully. A wicked man of the desert cast this dreadful curse upon me. sacred realm that one will find the divine relic, the Triforce, which contains the essence of the gods. Three golden goddesses.
walked in. With her strong flaming arms, she cultivated the land and created the red earth. Nerith poured her wisdom onto the earth and gave spirit of law to the world. With her rich soul, produced all life forms that would uphold the law. This is basically the creation story of this planet. There it is. The three great goddesses and their golden sacred triangles remain in the power where the goddesses left for the world. Since then, the sacred triangles have become the basis of the world providence and the resting place of the triangles have become the sacred realm the triforce basically right i don't think that term comes up until later thou must never allow the desert man in black armor to lay his hands on the sacred triforce there it is thou must never suffer that man with his evil heart to enter the sacred realm of legend it is refreshing to have a story, and even inside of a game, but to have a story where good and evil are so clearly defined. Uh, all of this shades of gray and this garbage coming out in books and, and movies and TV, uh, where it's like they're ignoring what evil is and that we must fight it. So anyway, this is one of the reasons I love The Legend of Zelda games. Because evil and good are clearly defined. Evil fights, good fights evil, and good wins. That's the way it should be, the way it always has been, and it's worked pretty well so far. That evil man who cast the death curse upon me sapped my power. Because of that curse, my end is nigh. Through your violent efforts to break the Though your violent efforts to break the curse were successful, I was doomed before you started. Yes, I will pass away soon, but do not grieve for me. I have been able to tell you of these important matters. This is Hyrule's final hope. Link, go now to Hyrule Castle. There. That will surely meet the Princess of Destiny. Take the stone with you. The stone that man wanted so much that he cast the curse on me. spiritual stone of the forest, now entrusted to you, where the great Deku tree. The future depends upon thee, Link. Thou art courageous. Navi the fairy, help Link carry out my will. I entreat ye, Navi. Good. To which I referenced earlier. Let's go to Hyrule Castle, Link. Goodbye, Great Deku Tree. There you have it. That is the first dungeon. Ocarina of Time. And Mr. Busybody's sitting here. Hey Link, what did you do? The great Deku tree, did he die? How did you do a thing like that? It's all your fault. So you can tell we're well loved by Mido. Ow! Ah! 
Always walk through the grass. On the way, just, just pick up a spare rupee or two. So now we're leaving the forest for the first time. Oh, you're leaving? I knew that you would leave the forest someday, Link. Because you were different from me and my friends. But that's okay. Because we'll be friends forever, won't we? I want you to have this ocarina. Please take good care of it. You received the fairy ocarina. This is a memento from Saria, or Sarah. Like I said, not sure how to pronounce that. Said it's Z, start playing it. It is a really cool function of this game. Using that instrument and playing different notes and songs and being able to tr trigger different events and things. Anyway, I just love how they incorporate music into these games. Um, one of the coolest ways was in uh, Skyward Sword. And the, uh, anyway, I really loved the orchestration and the music in that game. She says, when you play my ocarina, I hope that you will think of me and come back to the forest to visit. Makes you wonder how much she knows her future and if she knows anything more than and this is our first time in Hyrule Field. always around. It appears that the time has finally come for you to start your adventure. You will encounter many hardships ahead. That is your fate. Don't feel discouraged, even during the toughest times. Go straight this way and you will see Hyrule Castle. You will meet a princess there. If you are lost and don't know which way to go, look at the map. And that basically tells you how to use the map using Z and R subscreen and then did we get all that we sure did all right then I'll see you around hoot hoot Afterwards. this will conclude our adventure for today please uh, like share and subscribe really appreciate you guys and uh, very soon um, I, I will have the next phase of our adventure, just look for it on the channel, and then we're going to go see the princess and do the next phase. But for now, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, Loud Boy. and again, uh, comments below. If you want to just make fun of how I pronounce things, great. <laughs> um, uh, like I said, I've been playing this game for almost 30 years. It is still my favorite Zelda game. It is a pleasure and an honor be playing it with you guys so until next time guys be kind love each other help each other and be strong and and remember god loves you and really that's all that matters <laughs> <laughs>